Uh, so that concludes sort of the features that we have announced for console. And so with that, console is now really a f completely full-featured service mesh solution. It's also the first service mesh to support these multi-cloud, multi-region, multi-platform deployments uh, in a completely automated fashion. So we've been discussing the challenges of service networking, uh, and I'd like to continue that with a few features that we have uh, for Nomad as well. The first feature is that we're introducing network namespace support into Nomad. Network namespaces enable us to have an isolated network for every task group within Nomad. And so what this ends up looking like is that for your group, say in your app, you can now define a network, such as a bridge network, and this creates a, cu a private network namespace for all the tasks within that group. You could set up port forwarding so that you could define an HTTP port. In this case, Nomad will create a dynamic port such as 1234, and when that's reached on the host machine, we'll route it over to port 8080. This enables a much better way to deploy applications uh, in a secure fashion, and it also enables us to build features uh, such as native connect integration. And so with the next release of Nomad, we also now have native connect integration. What that looks like is say we have a, a, a service for Redis, and we want Redis to accept connections over connect. We just define the one stanza below that says connect and sidecar service. They're empty, but the existence of them says we want to use connect, and we want you to set up the sidecar automatically for us. We don't want to have to manually deploy the sidecar. We can't talk the protocol natively. So having these two things, Nomad will automatically deploy that sidecar. And then on the side that wants to connect to the application, we have something similar. But in this case, we also have to say what we want to talk to. And so we're saying we want to talk to the Redis server. And when we talk to port 6379, please route it to the service named Redis Cache using Connect. Visually, what this looks like is that we have two task groups, the API group and the Redis group. And with the Redis side, we've automatically injected a proxy to accept connections. And with the API side, we've automatically injected a proxy in order to establish connections to upstream services. At the bottom of this, this is all just base connect. So you still get the same encryption, intention enforcement, et cetera. And if you were using Nomad with other systems, such as EC2 or Kubernetes, then this would work between those services as well. And so the native connection integration utilizes the new network namespace feature that's available. And the intentions are still managed directly in console. So while you could define whether you want to receive connections and who you want to talk to, whether you're actually allowed to do that is still enforced directly within console. So you create your intentions, say web, could talk to DB, et cetera. Other features that are not networking related that we're really excited for in Nomad are host volumes and a new file explorer in the UI. Host volumes enable volume sharing between multiple groups using files that are already on the host. So in this case, we're mounting some certs that we had directly into a task group that we've provisioned directly onto the host. So you could imagine that these certs, they're sensitive information, they're secret. They got provisioned onto the machine out of band in some other way, but we could still make them available to our Nomad tasks. And in a future version of Nomad, we're also going to enable all of the network storage uh, plugins so we could have additional volumes as well. For the File Explorer, Nomad has a great UI, and we've, we've, an, we've shipped the ability to browse the files of any allocation in Nomad directly in the UI. So you could browse it just like a file system. When you see a, a file such as a text file, you could read it directly in the browser. If it's something like a log file that's continuously updating, you could also tail it in the browser and see it live update just without refreshing the page. And when you look at media, it renders it directly there. So you don't have to download anything. It shows up directly in the UI. And so using these, this functionality, you could click around all your applications. And if you have per, uh, permissions, you could see any of the files in there, log files, uh, debug information, data, et cetera. All of these features from network namespaces, the native connect integration, host volumes, and the new uh, File Explorer UI are open source and available in Nomad 0.10, which will be coming soon. And so these are some exciting new features in both Nomad and console. We also have a lot of updates for Vault and Terraform. Uh, but so that you could have coffee and have some breaks, I will point you to other talks for those. So for Vault, if you're interested in Vault, please see Jeff Mitchell's talk tomorrow. Uh, he will be giving a Vault update about recent features as well as some new stuff that we've been working on. And if you're interested in Terraform, we have multiple talks for you. 
the opening keynote tomorrow is from Paul Hinsey, who's our senior director of Terraform, and he'll be talking uh, pretty much about all the various things that Terraform has been up to, which is a lot. Um, and then today, if you're interested in Terraform, we have two talks, one by Kristen, uh, who is an excellent core engineer on Terraform, worked a lot on Terraform 0.12, and so she will be giving a talk on Terraform 0.12. That's today at 11.30. And there's also a talk by Chris, who is the lead in charge of our Sentinel project. And so Sentinel is our way to do policy enforcement on all our projects, but he'll be talking about Sentinel uh, focused on Terraform, and that's also today. So please look at these talks if you want to hear updates for our other projects, and have a great day. Thank you very much.